if you knew what to do if you ain't welcome back is me co and i'm back with another video on the channel yeah yeah today we're gonna get straight to it no chaser straight liquor i got a breast reduction surgery i am officially two weeks one day post-op and today is may 23rd and so um quick video and i'm gonna talk about um i saw a few questions of other people blah, blah, blah. i saw a few questions that other people were asking in comments of other videos that i've watched when i did my extensive research on tiktok and youtube and so i kind of jotted some of those down so i'm looking down up down up because i'm looking at my notes um first question why did i get the surgery i am four foot nine petite and short and i have big old gray boobies they made my back hurt my shoulder hurt my neck hurt outside of the things that cause physical pain and bad posture it was mentally exhausting emotionally exhausting being like a medium uh overall but having to get a large and an extra large because your boobs are so big and just that body dysmorphia and that constant fight and struggle i was tired of it this is surgery that i've always wanted and i've always said that i wanted to be a b cup or smaller rather by surgery or exercise and it's fortunate to be able to get it by surgery so that's the why and i don't want any men in my comments going oh why did you take away something god gave you uh you should have kept me beautiful the way you are wah, 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 wah. nobody asks you nobody cares i'm doing this for myself and when i pop out and i'm healed and i'm covered i'm gonna be jane later <laughs> i was still hear me um uh, anyways next question did insurance pay yes insurance pay but long story short i had double insurance because like i said i knew that i was about to get kicked off my parents insurance because i'm turning 26 in june so yay welcome to the u.s when you get older you have more financial responsibility than paying high tail insurance so i knew i was gonna get my parents insurance and i need additional insurance and so i was making the doctor visits and all this other stuff under my mom's insurance but when i got insurance it became the primary insurance and i hadn't met the deductible so i had to pay the deductible for my insurance the deductible for her insurance and it was about 700 bucks a pretty penny a pretty penny let me say that so that's not on that and the insurance that i had before you asked is cigna my mom has cigna as well um next question requirements for the surgery i had to be a below a certain bmi based upon my height and weight um i had three doctor visits i had to have three doctor visits in not in the consecutive in the same consecutive month so I had one in August, say September, and then November. So three separate months of having doctor visits. And I had to pick a surgeon within the network. So when I called Sigma, I called and said, hey, what do I have to do um, to be able to get a breast reduction surgery and it be deemed a medical necessity? Not, I feel insecure about my body. I feel insecure about having big boobs and the submental. They're going to be like, nope, you're on the recorded line. You're not going to be able to get it because that's cosmetic. Don't you say that. My back, this is what you're going to say for Signal or anybody else. My back has been hurting so bad. My neck has been hurting so bad. I have really bad posture. And, you know, I'm, I, what do I need to do to get a breast reduction thinking that's a medical necessity? That's what you're going to say. And they're going to tell you whatever you're going to do. And then they're going to send you a list of surgeons that are in that work. Do your research. Ask around and see. Look the reviews and see who's the best fit for you based on your beliefs and needs and wants. Okay? Um, things that have helped me. At this part, y'all better not skip and y'all better listen, especially my sisters. I so after your surgery, they're gonna wean you off your opioids because America has a really bad thing about being addicted to drugs. So they're gonna wean you off of those. And so I was taking hydrocodone and gabapentin. Okay, this, <laughs> this. Tylenol, extra strength. It's going to take place as hydrocodone is going to help with the pain um, that you have associated with the surgery, right? The next thing you're going to want to want in place of gabapentin, which helps with nerve pain. You know, when you get surgery, they cut and chop all your titties off like freaking onion, and they're putting things back together so your nerves and everything is starting to reconnect, blood is starting to flow, all the stuff that was interrupted during surgery. Advil. 
because it has ibuprofen in it and it's going to help with the nerve pain. Don't ask me why. That's what my PA said. I trusted and this woman knew what she was talking about. So, your best friends. Tylenol for pain. Extra strength. Advil. Ibuprofen for nerve pain. Do not take aspirin. It is a blood thinner. It is not your friend. Advil. Tylenol. A miracle. Okay? Um, other things that help me cause is you're still going to be bleeding, oozing, all this other type of stuff where they made incisions on your nipples and however way they made the incision. So you're going to need gauzes to keep that from leaking through your clothes and all this other stuff. Do not, do not get these right here. As a sister, do not get these. They're going to look or anything that looks like this. You see the ridges? You see the grooves? You see that? These will pull the skin off your nipple. When they get dry, they'll pull the skin off your body. Be really hard to pull off and be really painful and unnecessarily hard. Do not get these. Do not get them. Okay? If you're black, your sister, whoever, get these. Mick, have you said a name? Not a hair pad. They're three by four. They're soft, no grooves, right? Say um, shipping takes really long for these or whatever the case might be. You're going to get the Band-Aid version. I'm going to put the link in the bio. It's called um, uh, Non-Stick Pads. It's in a green box and it's super absorbent. Soft to the skin like a pillow. You're going to get something like that. Once again, do not get this. You're going to lose your nipple. You're going to lose your nipple skin, okay? Do not get this. Remember it. If you don't take anything else from this video, do not get this, okay? Um, another thing that helped me, that has helped me, my mom gave me this fan to borrow. I have been getting really bad hot flashes and a fever, low-grade fever after having a surgery, which is completely normal. Um, it charges. Don't ask me where she got it from. I don't know. I'm going to try and find that on Amazon, something similar. But this is a lifesaver. Um, let me see. I told you about the causes. The medicine, the fan. You're going to need a maternity pillow because you're not going to be able to sleep on your side or your stomach. So if you're a side or a stomach sleeper, please get a maternity pillow so you can sleep on your back. It is a game changer. If you don't want to get a maternity pillow, get a mattress that the head lifts to be able to help you navigate getting in and out of bed or sleep more comfortably or sitting up in the bed watching TV, whatever. Those two things have significantly helped me during the surgery. Um, button up pajamas, especially the first week. You're not going to want to do a lot of pulling over the head to put on your clothes. So you're really going to want some comfortable button up pajamas. I got all of mine. I got one set from Amazon and they suck, so I'm not going to put that in the link. But my other four pair of pajamas I got from Walmart. Okay? Go in the mama section. The adult section. Don't get the cute pajamas. Get the ugly ones that button up. They're soft to touch and some shorts. You're going to thank me. They're a lifesaver. Throw them in the washing machine and just keep wearing them over and over and over again until you get to a point where you can pull clothes off your head all the time. Game changer. Um, maternity pillow. Medicine, gauzes, fan, let me see, Miralax, and whatever stool softener they prescribe you. You're not going to be severely constipated after the surgery because for whatever science reason, anesthesia and opioids cause severe constipation. You're going to be seriously bloated. I don't think I booed for like five days. Five Days and if it wasn't for that stool softener, oh, that's just gonna, that's just how I'm saying. Let you just leave that to the imagination. Um, Miralax is what's gonna help you go to the bathroom. So this is something similar to Miri Miralax or something like that, if you can. Um, what else? The Miralax you don't need. Paper towels. After the surgery, for however period of time, you're still going to be super sensitive. And they told me to wash my chest with my hands. But for some reason, I couldn't get all the excess dirt, fluids, petroleum jelly. I couldn't get it all off with my hands. So my PA recommended paper towels. Now, you know, you're going to need them. Just, just, I know it sounds weird probably, but you're going to need them. They're going to be super soft on your skin. And it's easy to soap up and wet up. And you're just going to rub around your nipples wherever they made the incisions and under and when i tell you it was so much easier another thing that helped me when you get ready to take your shower especially the first couple weeks 
do not get in the shower with your face facing the water. Get in the shower with your back facing the water. Wash your body and all that stuff first. And then wash your chest. If you can, get um, a detachable shower head so that you can kind of rinse under your chest and make sure you're getting all the soap and all that stuff off your body. And rinse on top and do it quick. So a detachable shower head to rinse, rinse, rinse. Paper towel so that it's soft on your skin because paper towels are going to be your new best friend and they're going to be your new washcloth. Do not use a towel. Your hands are not going to be sufficient because you're going to be really sensitive, really tender, really sore. So keep that in mind. All right. Told y'all about the Advil, the Tylenol, the pillow, the fan, the mirror legs, the gauzes, the gauzes, and the paper towel. Things I should have considered or taken more seriously. If you're not in the shape that you want to be, if you don't look the way you want right now, do it before your surgery. Do not wait to surgery to do right because they're going to take all this boobish off. And if you're anything like me, some of us, we have the stomach to match the boobs. So when they took the boobs away, I feel like I look six months pregnant, even though my folks said I'm being dramatic. But to me, I feel like I look six months pregnant. But if you're a petite or whatever the case may be, you look the way you look and all you want is the titties to be chopped off, you're good. But if not, hit that gym, lift those weights, do that cardio, be in a calorie deficit diet, and lose that weight prior to the surgery. Because once you're set, you're set. There will be no intense working out, no lifting weights for anything over three or eight pounds, no running, swimming, hiking, none of that. So get it in now. Grind now. Because now I have to be even more meticulous about the way I eat right because i can't do all that right now okay so those are things that you need to consider um things that i was struggling with because i believe it's powering your words so to provide context the left side was not healing at the same rate as the right side the left side was looking like frankenstein oozing oozing loss of pigment um on the areola because of this demon and um, it just wasn't healing the same. The right side was coming together like, yes, they can work it. And the left side, I felt like it was looking like Frankenstein. And it was very depressing, uh, nerve-wracking. It'd be nice. I would just cry and cry and cry and talk to my mom because it didn't look normal. But after um, having my post op visit with my surgeon today, telling me everything looks normal, this is fine, nothing to be concerned about. Um, I feel a lot better. Um, that's that on that. Um, yes. That's it. So I told you guys about the surgery. Um, how was it? Like I said, I didn't. I don't think I told y'all about the surgery, so I really don't remember much. I just had to get there an hour before. I took my blood work, my vitals, all of that. The anesthesiologist manager or whatever came in and told me about the risks, which were none because I'm in such great um, shape and health. No diabetes, no blood pressure, none of that. The anesthesiologist came in. I already had a vein, <laughs> an IV in my vein, and um, it went up and I was knocked out. And by the time I got out of surgery, I was in the recovery room, confused, disoriented, which is normal, and crying, um, asking for my mom. So that's that on that. I hope this video has been informative to you. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's been beneficial in some form way and fashion um if you have any questions comments or concerns in the comments put them below and i'll do my best to address it um and i will give you guys an update um when i'm about one month post op or a month and a half or whenever i'm just at a drastically better point where i can take pictures show the difference the before and after and um reassure you all that are interested in the surgery to go for it and do whatever you need to do to be able to get insurance to cover it or save up for it so yeah that's it be sure to like comment and subscribe be sure to follow me on instagram and on tiktok i'm going to try and put it here they're both the same and um love you all i appreciate y'all y'all have a phenomenal day